Okay, I want to do a quick little video. I got really poor lighting in here. I really do apologize. Uh, I'll probably just do a, another one when I get some better light in here. But um, what I wanted to do was I wanted to quickly, and I mean really quickly, go over the fundamentals of how to use a Picket 3. Okay? Now this is uh, Microchip's um, official programmer, I think. And uh, what it does is it connects via USB. Uh, to a standard uh, Windows 10 type uh, PC okay now using these things I found is interesting uh, I actually originally got one of these but I found that these are more hassle than they're worth or at least I think so and there's not that many data sheets on them out there but um, what I found was best was uh, taking these individual um, wires and a little piece of uh, breadboard and wiring it up according to the manual itself okay now I did come across some things that I really need to tell you okay um, the most important thing here is this little arrow okay that indicates your pin one all of the information in the manuals uh, requires that you know which side of that is one okay the w uh, the pin directly above it is pin one pin two pin three pin four pin five and pin six okay uh, to go a little bit over the theory of how it programs um, its primary programming mode is done by an at an SPI like or an actual SPI interface. Um, what it does is it uh, triggers master clear, okay, and uh, that signal comes over pin one, okay, so it goes to pin four on the PIC 16F88, okay, that's just where master clear is on this particular PIC chip, okay. Um, how it works is the picket 3 trips master clear and grabs it just as it's unclearing okay at that point it's programmable at least as far as I can understand the documentation okay so that's why it needs that particular pin connected okay now pin 2 is interesting and this might be the most important piece of information that you get out of this video okay uh, took me a little while to figure out how pin 2 actually works mm -hmm. your first reaction is is that because this device is powered in this case by USB tether uh, that pin 2 provides the power to the pick guess what it doesn't mm -hmm. okay what you do is you externally power it and what I'm doing is I'm powering it with a tablet brick over here okay and that's what this uh, red wire is for and this black wire okay all pin 2 on the picket 3 does mm -hmm. is sense that voltage okay now remember that okay it's called uh, VDD target okay but what it is is it's a voltage sensor that uh, just sees that all of the voltage is correct okay and it won't program unless the pick chip is powered correctly so what you do is you power the pick chip uh, externally with another supply okay and pin 2 goes to VDD which is uh, uh, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, pin 14, okay, and the ground is directly across from it on pin 5, okay, uh, master clear on a pick 16F88 is pin 4, okay, w when you hook up 1 and 2 correctly, um, you've gotten past a lot of the hard stuff, okay, uh, pin 3 uh, just makes the ground common between the PIC and the programmer okay so what you do is you just plug uh, pin 3 of the picket into your ground okay 
Um, pins 4 and 5 are what actually do the programming. Like I was saying earlier, it's, it's, uh, it, it's a SPI interface or an SPI-like interface. And um, pin 4 carries the data, but pin 5 provides the clock. It's not asynchronous, okay? At least uh, what they call um, high voltage programming. There's also a low voltage programming mode uh, that uses pin 6, okay? Now I've connected up both, and you can actually program this way, okay? Uh, the usual programming mode goes through uh, uh, pins 4 and 5 on the ticket to pins 12 and 13 on the pick chip, okay? And what I do is I pause it, I pause the video right here and see where pins 4 and 5 on the picket go to uh, the pins on the pick chip itself. Now, where you find out this information is by looking at the data sheet, or rather the reference manual for the pick chip itself. Okay? What you have to do is you have to um, basically take pins 4 and 5 and get them to the PGD pin, which is data, and the PGC, which is the clock for it, okay? Um, interestingly enough, there's a low, low voltage programming mode that uses 6 that plugs into pin 9, okay? Okay, so we have this electrically set up, okay? All the lights are on. The really great thing about the Picket 3 is that it is right out of the box compatible with microchips development environment okay now let me let me close this and what we'll do is we'll look at we will look at the the programmer part of uh, NP lab X okay this is what it looks like okay now, what we want to do is we first want to connect, and we're assuming that we have it plugged in correctly uh, to a available USB port on our computer. Uh, we click the connect. It goes looking for the device. It, this little box here just says that, guess what, chips these days aren't all 5 volts, kind of like back in the day with TTL. So double check your manual because you can fry your chip, you can do damage to your equipment, okay? Uh, a PIC 16F88 is a 5 volt device, okay? So we're good here, okay? So it's scanning for it, and uh, it actually found the target device, uh, a PIC 16F88, so we're good. To actually program it, uh, what we did was we uh, programmed it in assembly language and we assembled it, or some people call it compiling, uh, but it's technically assembling, okay? So we come up here and we go file, import, hex. Sometimes in MP Lab X, it's hard to find your hex file. Uh, let me give you a brief look at what it looks like. It's it's almost always in dist, okay, and production. If you if you remember that it has to do with the distribution and and production production mode, you'll be able to find the hex file every time. Okay, so we select it and it loads. Okay, then we hit program, and if we have everything set up correctly, it'll program. And we're good. Okay, it actually programmed it. Uh, you always want to verify. So you click the verify button. And it comes back as verification successful. That's how easy it is to program a picture up when everything is set up correctly. Okay? 
Now, where the program comes from originally is the MPLAB X development environment. Okay? This is the source code that we program to the chip in this example. A typical program may be about this long here. I'll just scr scroll through all of it. Okay? Now, PIC chips do have a limited memory. You know, they're not like uh, all these SBCs like Beagle boards and stuff like that that have endless amounts of memory. Um, if you look closely at it, uh, I like to comment my stuff. Uh, assembly language is, um, you know, just a little bit hard to figure out. You know, you have to get, kind of figure it out in your head and then code it, okay? Because it's made up of teeny tiny little risky type um, uh, assembly opcodes, okay? So this is what it looks like. What we have to do is we have to build it, okay? And we go into production and we build project. This error comes up every now and then, and I actually have a fix for it. I think what I'll do is I'll go in later to my YouTube video and type the fix into the comments. A lot of people treat this as a very serious thing. I found the perfect uh, solution for it that just takes about 30 seconds and it works every time. Uh, but what it should have done is it should have come back with, uh, you know, I've successfully built uh, my hex file. Now we've already programmed it is basically what it looks like and this is a pretty good video so have a good day and uh, good luck programming your picture